Jason's story illustrates for us exactly how traditions change, how they live in our bodies and in our memories, how they remain precious to us. Hanukkah, unlike other Jewish holidays, doesn't appear in the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. The story of Hanukkah is told in apocryphal literature, minor books that didn't make it into the larger assembly when the stories were being written down and ordered. The observance of Hanukkah in North America became much more prominent in Jewish households by the 1920s, not so long ago, because of the increasing American emphasis on Christmas and even including the practice of giving gifts. Now this phenomenon is called acculturation, when a minority culture adopts the forms or habits or calendar of a majority culture, but still retains distinctive practice, food, rituals, traditions. It's different from assimilation, when a minority culture is subsumed entirely into the majority culture, leaving behind markers of difference, like language or religion, or food, or clothing. As we heard in the story, his Jewish aunt and uncle put up a Christmas tree, not because they were forced to at the point of a sword, like so many have been throughout history, but because they liked the sparkle. And still they maintained their family observance, their celebration of abundance, and their traditions around food. Now for many years, the story of the Maccabees victory over the Seleucid Greeks was the story of unlikely military triumph, of Jewish survival, and the importance of preserving Jewish identity and religious practice, even at very high cost. It wasn't until many years after the event that the story of the jar of oil appears in the Talmud at all. The miracle of the light in the darkness, the wonder and gratitude for the blessings that appear in the most desperate times, that powerful image of the jar of oil that was only supposed to last for one night but lasted for eight. That story is first inserted by the rabbis who wrote and codified the Talmud many years after the actual military victory, and even many years after the writing of the books of the Maccabees. Some think that the insertion of the miracle of oil into the story was to take attention away from the Maccabees and military action and turn it to God, to whom the miracle is attributed. Some think the rabbis were afraid of encouraging Jewish military action against their oppressors, who by that time were no longer the Greeks, but the conquering Romans for fear of retribution. Some think that the rabbis disapproved of the Maccabees and their descendants, the Hasmonean kings, who ruled for a brief period before the Roman Empire invaded and assumed control from the Greeks. I'm afraid I can't tell you which it is. Is this a story about surviving and resisting the forces of empire? Is this a story about the faithfulness of a God who provides light in the darkness? Is this a story about religious freedom or about the obligation to share the abundance of good things that we celebrate? It's tempting to hunt for the true meaning of these ancient stories, but of course their meaning lives on in how they shape the lives of the people who tell them and the people who hold them most dear. During these days of early darkness, May you be shaped by the Hanukkah story in this way. May you hold fast to the rituals that are yours by inheritance or by choice. May you resist the evils of empire that divide and diminish us even today. And may you share any light that comes your way, whether it comes from a power greater than you or from someone like Aunt Lee, who always sets a place at the table. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. 
We have a video today from the Reverend Joanna Lubkin, a Jewish UU minister in the Boston area, who will share the ritual of lighting Hanukkah candles with us and sing some blessings. Good morning. Last night, families around the world lit Hanukkah candles, lighting three candles for the third night of the festival. So I bring this morning the practice of lighting candles to this Unitarian Universalist congregation, where many of us, like myself, have a Jewish background or want to honor the Jewish holidays. The rabbis of the Talmud well, they argued a lot, and one of the things they argued over was how one should light the Hanukkah lights. One rabbi and his school of thought thought that each night you should add an extra light, that on the first night you light one candle or lamp, and the second night you light two, and so on. Another school of thought said, no, you should start with eight and get fewer and fewer as it goes on. So from eight candles and lamps or lights to seven and six. Well, as you may have guessed, the school of thought about adding light won over time, that that's what we do. And the rationale is that we should be increasing light. We should be increasing joy in the world. We should be bringing more light to darkness. I'm taking that to heart this year, that in a year where things have been hard, let's add light, let's add joy, let's add wonder. So whatever that looks like for you, may this be a season of increasing light and joy, warmth and connection during long nights. I'll sing the Hanukkah blessings in Hebrew, the first two blessings over the candle, and the third for the first time in a year where one does something. And since this is the first Sunday this year where we're lighting Hanukkah to candle, candles together, we'll sing that one as well. And following that, we'll say the English translation. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kedushanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu le'adlik ner she'el Hanukkah. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam she'asa nisim l'avoteinu b'yamim ha'ahem b'atman ha'ahem. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Blessed are you, source of all, who brings moments of holiness to our lives through the ritual of lighting the Hanukkah lights. Blessed are you, source of all, who brings our attention to miracles from ages past to this very moment. Blessed are you, source of all, who has given us life, sustained us, and brought us to this very moment. And let us say, Amen. Happy Hanukkah. One of the ways that we live out our mission is to create